is this readily converted or convertible to a larger capacity magazine than 10 or is it not? Now we've talked about it, but I thought it would be much more appropriate if we demonstrated exactly what we mean by readily convertible. This is the basic piece. We've removed the, the base plate that's right here and, and the spring and the other, other two pieces involved. So we take the base plate off. We take an extension, and again, this was an extension that was printed out on a 3D printer. So I'd call that readily available as well. Here's the, the 10 round magazine. Here's the extension. There it is, converted. Your spring, your base plate, you're in business. That, ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, is in fact something that is readily convertible. Hence, this is a high capacity magazine. This, according to the terms of House Bill 1224, is illegal. I've been given another letter from a woman who was here to testify on Monday, but due to time constraints, could not have her voice heard. And I am here to read her letter, and I hope you will listen as it is from a women's perspective regarding the limits on magazines. My name is Laura Carno, and I am from El Paso County. I run a political media company that communicates with women, and it's on behalf of myself and these women that I am urging you to vote against House Bill 1224 because it desperately affects women. And the reason that this affects women more than men is women are smaller in stature than their assailant. We never know if we are going to have a larger assailant, multiple assailants. Maybe it's a home invasion. Maybe I have to protect my children's lives as well as my own life. What if the bad guy is hopped up on drugs? And even if I land a shot, he doesn't go down because he's not feeling pain. The point is, I need to be the one to decide how much firepower I need to be able to protect myself. You know, women in my mother's generation used to say, I don't need a man to take care of me. And that generation of women raised my generation of women to be independent. I can take care of myself in every way, including my own self-defense. So when my government says, no, I'm sorry, I understand that you think you're independent, but you need to wait for a man with a uniform and a gun to come help you. So just hang in there until he gets there. I'm not okay with that. I think we've come too far in too many decades to go backward on that. Listen now as I tell you how it is that this bill will ban the sale of the most popular handgun sold in the United States of America. The most popular handgun sold in the United States of America is a Glock handgun. It's a semi-automatic pistol. Some of the Glocks have magazine capacities built in that are greater than 15, and we all understand that those are going to be banned. Uh, with this bill. But the problem that we have, and this is how this bill actually bans the sale of all Glock handguns and most other semi-automatic handguns in the state of Colorado come July 1st. And that's in the definition part, just as it was with the shotguns. And the important part of the definition that you need to look at is on page 2, starting at line 12, where the bill de defines what a large capacity magazine is for the law. And the important words are, starting on line 12, or that is designed to be readily converted 
to accept more than 15 rounds. Glock, as an original equipment manufacturer, makes a magazine extension that allows their magazines to hold five more rounds for a nine millimeter and four more rounds for a 40 cal pistol. And it's designed that way. The deck plate at the bottom of the magazine comes off, the extension slips on and the deck plate goes back in there. That's the way it's designed and therefore this bill bans the sale of those magazines in Colorado starting July 1st of this year. So I guess you could say you can still buy the pistol, but it just becomes a paperweight because it takes a magazine to feed it. Sheriff testified to this bill also, and one thing I thought was very powerful, I'm sure you've seen a picture of it, maybe you haven't, but you had one sheriff testifying with at times up to 30 sheriffs standing behind them, opposed to every single bill that was heard on Monday. They testified in this bill that this was something that they had no idea how they could enforce. And I think you've heard that said over and over in here. How are we going to enforce this? And probably most emotionally to me, the person who this will impact is the veteran in the wheelchair, who I told some of you who were actually in the room last week uh, about, but I'll tell now some of you who might not have been, is Tyler Wilson, the young man who served in Afghanistan, who took four shots and is forever paralyzed in a wheelchair, who now lives here in Metro Denver. He's the young man who tried to testify a week ago today, who showed up at 7.30 in the morning and finally had to leave at 4 o'clock unable to testify despite having signed up for that because nobody could get around to hearing from him. That is a disgrace and it hurts my heart. Tyler wanted to tell you how he needs a right to defend himself now that he will spend the rest of his life in a wheelchair. He feels handicapped, not just by the wheelchair, but by this bill and the inability to defend himself as he lives in the streets of Metro Denver. And I can tell you that the people who will be impacted the most are the people who are not gonna comply with this law. We talk down here about emptying our prisons and the jails and the appropriateness of criminal penalties. And I will tell you that my people will not do this. They will not give up their rights. Um, under the Second Amendment, they will not accept an arbitrary 10, 10 as if that is going to save somebody in particular. If you are motivated, you will mow down people with whatever you have. Senator so, Roberts, 20 seconds. That's fine, and I'll go into my next 10 minutes if I'm not done. Thank okay. you, Mr. President. Okay. So I would suggest that you be prepared to jail the grandmother who lives down the dirt road, you be prepared to go after that rancher who is actually using it as a tool on his tool belt, no different than a wire cutter or the shovel he needs to use on his job, on his daily rounds around the ranch, and you be prepared to jail people like Tyler Wilson because I do not believe they will comply with this. And I, for one, cannot support a bill that is asking people, law-abiding citizens, to become criminals. It is just wrong. If, on the other hand, you want to do like I do, um, allow my soon-to-be 11-year-old son to fire one of my rifles, again, blowing up watermelons, typically, uh, the, the scary black rifles have a slidable stock so that the little guy can actually reach around and, and avoid the scar that I told you guys about from the scope that I got from my dad's rifle when I was little. This bill makes my handing him the rifle that he's been shooting for about three years now a misdemeanor two punishable by up to 12 months in prison and a $5,000 fine. 
Is that really what you intend to do? If it is, that's pretty disappointing. If it isn't, then I will ask you to vote against this bill. How far? How far do you want to go pushing gun control in Colorado?